Hallelujah. Glory to God and happy to be back again with the family in this place. And uh, thank God, Pastor Samson. Today I was not preaching in both places. I am fresh with a fresh message. 100% fresh message from the Lord. Uh, because today we had, the, uh, we had a different person preaching in, in the Telugu church. And uh, in Dubai church we had uh, Pastor Thomas P. Thomas who was uh, with us on the anniversary day. Uh, we thought he would, he or uh, his pastor who is from New Zealand would come and share with us tonight here also. But unfortunately it didn't work. Uh, so they did not come here even next week we thought but it looks like the next week also they will not come but we had a blessed time in the with the Lord with a wonderful message by Pastor Thomas P. Thomas and both the services in Dubai and Sharjah was wonderful and uh, it's wonderful to be back here and we are as a family happy that Chrissy is back uh, with our testimonies because uh, even though we say she went to sing in the concert, uh, we are happy it was not singing in the concert, it was more a ministry or a, a missionary trip for her. Uh, it's good exposure, I mean I thank God for the testimony that she brought in here and, uh, and the burden that she can come with, that's what we want our children uh, you know, to grow in that way that we, when you have a burden um, for the souls, that's what our church is, sister. Uh, uh, read for us uh, from our vision and uh, we have a vision our church has a vision all of us must be burdened for the kingdom of God and to expand the kingdom of God we even though all of you sit here in this place and only few of us are preaching that does not mean that you have no job and only we have job everyone has a job and God has called all of us the purpose and plan it becomes very important for us to know our calling. Hallelujah. It's not always preaching that is calling. It is always obeying, first of all, hearing the voice of God and obeying His voice. And God will place you suddenly into places that you cannot even imagine. Like Chris's testimony that you heard. He'll keep you in those places. We have testimonies. If you want uh, Tina to speak, she'll have plenty of those kind of stuff. Because she went into... Uh, those kind of things in her life, even Jasper in his college and so on. So each one of you who is sitting here has a plan and purpose and that is connected with building the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And I won't take a lot of time, but then let's go to the, uh, uh, the, the verse. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'll take you through one scripture and uh, then later on I'll give the title for my message uh, which I try to do most of the time so that you will at least remember the title so the message will be uh, more near to you. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5 from the beginning. I will read for you. Luke chapter 5 from the beginning. So it was as the multitude pressed about him, that is Jesus, to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets then he got into one of the boats which was Simon's that is Peter's and asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat when he had stopped speaking he said to Simon launch out into the deep and let, let down your nets for a catch. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, Master God. That when you are there, you will speak to us and you promised to us that where there are two or three gathered in my name, I'll be there. And when you speak, Lord, we are changed, transformed and we are set free. We are healed. Lord, we are master guided, Father God, master into the plans that you have for us. Thank you that you are here tonight, Father. When I surrender myself into your hands, lead me, Lord, I will be your tool and you are the speaker and I'll speak what you speak to me, Father God. And every brother and sister who's here, they will receive the seed of the word and that seed will grow in them and they will be fruitful. 
we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' most precious name, pray, Lord. Amen. I say the, the title for the message is Go Deeper. Go Deeper. Amen. Deeper. You got to go deeper. Hallelujah. I'm so happy today. Message is going to be good today. My friend is there, Tina. <laughs> she helps me. Some of you don't know, she's been my friend for many years. Since she was young. Yes, right? Yes, of course. Let's yes. go deeper. Deeper. In friendship. <laughs> and the word. <laughs> okay. Uh, go deeper. You know, the story is very, very clear that uh, Peter and his, all his people, you know, they went for sh fishing that night and they came back without any fish. If you go down, you'll find that. No fish. Went for fishing. No fish. They did go deep, of course. Fishermen, professional fishermen, they go in deep into the sea. And they came back without any fish. We don't know why. Sometimes God do mysterious things to show that he is there. Amen. And when they came back, now Jesus comes in and sits in the boat and preaches. Immediately after preaching, there is no other description. Straight away says, tell, he calls Peter and says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, Jesus is not a fisherman. He's a carpenter by profession. And now he's telling the fisherman, launch out into deep. And I said this probably before. Normally, no fisherman goes for fishing during the day. There are scientific reasons for that. Only during the night, fish come up uh, to the surface so that they can catch them. So, in the daytime, fish all, they all go down and they are, we cannot normally fish. So, verse 5, Simon answered and said, Hey, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. It's a very important message right here in this place. Now, Peter answers it. He could have said, Jesus, I know you are a good preacher. You bring so many parables. You teach people. People are so happy with your preaching. They're enjoying. You, you do that job very well. But I'm a fisherman. I know I finished my job last night. Please don't ask me to go again. He could have said that, right? It's, it's, it's gentle to speak. I toiled the whole night. No fish. So I gave up. Please don't ask me to go again. Just now I cleanse my, all my nets. They are clean now. I don't want to spoil them again. That's what Peter could have said. He did say, like everybody, many of us, when God calls us, we have our reasoning. We say, Lord, we did all night. We did this work before. We went this way before. Please, we say to God. But Peter did something different here. Even though he came up with reasoning, he also obeyed what Jesus said. Hallelujah. There is power in obedience, in obedience to God. There is power in obedience to God. I want you to take the word into your hands. If you want to be victorious and successful in your life, there is power when you obey the voice of God. Something happens when you obey the voice of God. Here, Peter clearly first mentioned what happened to him his situation he explained to Jesus yet because he saw something special in Jesus Jesus you know anybody saw Jesus something would happen to them another example Zacchaeus if you see Jesus just entered his house Jesus did not preach to him Jesus did not command him Zacchaeus was changed even we see many such people when people saw Jesus because there was such grace and there such radiance in him. Whatever he spoke was very appealing because he was light of the world and it was life to people. Amen. So, now Peter agreed because he saw something. What Jesus said was good and he obeyed and we know the story. Peter caught a lot of fish. Now, do not be excited. Oh, what a result because Peter obeyed. That was not the final result. In Peter's life. Do you understand? It was not the final. That's not the fish. Yes, Peter can say, I can do good business today. I've got plenty of fish. Lots of money. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That was not the end of it. But Peter 
something happened to him something great was waiting at that point ma to happen in peter's life a complete transformation that would take place in peter's life was waiting there at that time now peter realizes at that point that he was a sinner and he confessed i am a sinner to jesus christ when he confessed you know what happens with the confession follows repentance because he knows he is a sinner and many sinners who do not confess they, they will never repent anyone who is open with their sin they are the people who repent now peter openly said i am a sinful man please leave me i am not worthy to be with you you are a holy man of god that's what peter said and then jesus himself said until now you are catching fish henceforth you will catch men hallelujah now the transformation took place in peter's life peter's life was just changed because he obeyed one command of lord jesus christ brothers and sisters it is very important for us to be very sensitive in our life in christian life to listen to the voice of god so that any time it may come it can happen at any situation maybe middle of the night when you're driving when you're working when you're cooking when you're talking to your friend when you're in the middle of doing something suddenly the voice of the lord comes and speaks to you to do something may look funny may look uh, that you should not do but if you are sensitive and obey that something will happen in your life that you cannot imagine your life will be changed transformed completely maybe a great blessing is just waiting for you maybe your increment maybe your new job maybe your marriage maybe anything that is you have been waiting will just begin to manifest at that time when you obey god but then the thing that you're obeying to god may not be actually pointing to something what you have been waiting but that's the place where you're saying yes to the lord and god changes all situations Amen. Now, going deeper helped Peter, but at the command of Lord Jesus Christ. If, G if Peter said, "No, it's okay. No, I don't want to go deep. It's too difficult." Ah, uh, no. And furthermore, I just want to take you deeper into the Word tonight. What is actually going deeper into the de more deeper? And I will take you to the very interesting uh, 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 passage from. book of ezekiel chapter 47 i just want to take you there and you'll go further down quickly as possible ezekiel 47 chapter 47 verse 1 and we will see here very interesting picture uh, which ezekiel actually uh, explains to us and i'll read this for you then he brought me to the heavens he's talking about the angel who was taking ezekiel for a tour and brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east for the front of the temple faced east the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar now i just you know this description is very difficult for you to grasp in a short time but we are let's understand temple where the lord is and from the temple from inside from the door the water was flowing the temple is lord jesus christ amen lord jesus christ is the temple and from him the water was flowing towards the east let's not worry about the sides at this time but let's continue to follow and what happened was too he brought me out of by the way uh, of the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate that faces east and that was water running out of the right side was three and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand he measured 1000 cubits and he brought me through the waters and water came up to my ankles i want you to follow me with this word the water was coming from the temple that is the world from the presence of the lord the water was flowing and this water would began with a small stream but is going down as they went further about 1000 cubit the water just came up to ankle level in other words in the beginning when the water came probably it was only touching the soles of his feet 
nothing more, soles of his feet. He, they kept on walking, walking, walking forward. As they kept on walking, what happened? Finally, after 1,000 cubits, 1,000 cubits is not a very short distance, probably about 250 meters or so. So, a quarter kilometer, and the water came up to ankle level. And as you read further, 1,000 cubits more, the water came up to knee level. And 1,000 cubits more, the water came up to waist level, and further, another 1,000 kilometers. There was so much water that they had to swim. Hallelujah. Now water, this water represents what? That's what let us try to understand this night. We know very clearly, many places in the Bible, the water represents the Holy Spirit. If you go to book of John, chapter 7, verse 37. Book of John, chapter 7, verse 37. Jesus tells, uh, uh, it says, actually not tells, he says like this, 737. And he says, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. What he said, he did not tell. He cried out. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And here, today God is speaking to us. Jesus is speaking to each one of us. If anyone thirsts, come to me and drink. And then further down, if you go, verse 38. Uh, uh, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, in other translations say belly, out of his heart or out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And verse 39 tells what this living water is. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom the believer, whom those who believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because the Holy Spirit, uh, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This water, what Jesus was going to give to people was nothing, or if the what he was going to give, or not, not, nothing, or what he was going to give to people was nothing but Holy Spirit himself. Now, last couple of weeks or before we have been speaking about imparting word into your life how important is the word receiving the word or meditating the word is like receiving and hearing the word of God word is so important we also said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of mouth of God but then we always when we eat food we just do not eat we also drink we need to eat we need to drink amen we need to eat and we need to drink. And Jesus calls here. And if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink what I'm going to give it to you. And if you go back to John chapter 4, verse 13, if you see, it talks about John chapter 4. And there we can understand again what he's talking. 13. And Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will Will, will thirst again, the water which she gives. And verse 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. There's a lot of things that we can talk about in this scripture because Holy Spirit, when you drink, He will lead you into everlasting life. Hallelujah. It's not just the word of God, but the Holy Spirit is needed. Holy Spirit makes you to go to your destiny. He has been given as a gift to all of us. Holy Spirit, see Jesus Christ is the gift, the greatest gift God has given. And following Jesus Christ, then the next greatest gift he has given to us is Holy Spirit himself. If you go to book of Acts and chapter 2 verse 38, it's written, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, then you will receive the gift of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's an automatic process. Whenever you receive Jesus Christ, you also need to have Holy Spirit. Now, I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, you know this, info, this as information, but what is our problem is, we are always getting just we walk touching ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Walking, our souls are wet with the Holy Spirit or the water. But we are not going deeper. We are not going deeper. We are not walking further. We are not going there. What Holy Spirit can do in your lives. What Holy Spirit can turn around things in your life. How God can use you mightily. Because 
through and because and through holy spirit you sometimes do not experience it because you're not walking that walk therefore if you want to experience ankle deep you got to go first those 1000 cubits and once you have experienced ankle deep you know for sure your the holy spirit i mean the water has reached your ankles you can feel it you can move your feet and you know there's water but there's a big difference when you go up to knee level you can feel the difference you can feel the difference and there is something about it and when you go further waist level you begin to feel you're be already becoming light your body is becoming light and then when you go further you know that you need to swim now don't worry any one of you are uh, afraid of water don't worry about going to Holy Spirit water and if any one of you go went to Israel and uh, went into uh, the, uh, the Dead Sea you don't drown right in Dead Sea nobody drowns even try to drown you cannot drown you try yourself I want to drown you'll be in the water up how many of you experience that Dead Sea somebody here yeah yeah there, there are people so you actually don't drown uh, in Holy Spirit you will never drown but you will swim and you will be in him. Hallelujah. Because he is in you. I want you to, I want to encourage you. You got to walk further. Walk further. Walk deeper into Holy Spirit. Means Holy Spirit experience. Then you will see something new happening in your life. Now we saw Peter. You know he became from a fisherman to a man who fishes, uh, fishes human souls for the kingdom. Now, what is walking? Now, what is walking? What is walking in the spirit? We're going to talk. And before that, walking deeper means you have to press on forward. You want to go forward. Many of us talk. God wants us to be excellent people, excellent believers. God made everything that we should be excellent. We should not be anything that, that is substandard in our life. In our life, spiritual life, in our physical life, in our education, in our jobs, in every area, God wants us to be excellent. He, if you see his servants, his disciples, they were all excellent in everything they did. They were appreciated by people. They spoke good things. They wrote good things. If you see what Paul has written, it's amazing how he got this kind of wisdom all was through Holy Spirit. So he wants us to be excellent. If you want to do something, you must you must. Press on. I want to take you one interesting scripture that will give you some understanding. That is in 2 Kings chapter 13 verse 14. 2 Kings chapter 13 verse 14. Here is a story here. I'll, I, will, I want to tell you what means press on. Sorry. Yeah. 13 verse 14. Elisha had become sick with illness. Of which he would die. He has become sick of illness of which he would die. Not he did die. Then Joash the king of Israel came down to him. And wept over his face and said. Oh my father, my father. The chariots, chariots of Israel and the horses and horsemen. And no, he came. Elisha was sick. The king came. Call him my father, my father. Now it's good to go to prophet and honor him. I would say a prophet, a man of God. You honor him, you follow him. You, you know, he will open his mouth and begin to bless you. And the blessing will come to pass upon your lives. It's good to find such men of God and honor him. And verse 15 he says, And Elisha said to him, Take a bow, a bow, bow and, and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it and Elisha put his hand on the king's hand. And he said, open the east window. And he opened it and Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike Syrians at Aphek, 
till you have destroyed them. So prophecy, he was giving a prophecy to him. But I want to read the further what the situation here. Then he said, verse 18, then he said, take the arrows and he took them. He said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was very angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. This is story. You know. But God tells you to do something. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. This man, man of God has struck. He did not inform. He just We get tired so quickly doing things what God has told us to do. Brothers and sisters, be forward to do things. When I say press on, go forward, you have to always have the attitude of going forward, going forward. When you walk, go forward, you'll go deeper and deeper and deeper in spiritual realm. Hallelujah. That's the way. And we know what is going forward is walking. Then Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, Walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What it means is walking in the spirit. Means if you want to know, go deeper into the water, you have to walk through the waters. Means walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. If you go to beach in Bombay, Bombay Juhu Beach, the interesting part of Bombay Juhu Beach is you have to walk a long distance before you go very deep. And I've been to uh, Trivandrum uh, beach, Kovalam beach, we went next, less than 5 feet or 10 feet, we are already deep inside up to here. It's a very frightening experience. Because beach, we thought we can just go, you know, suddenly we're there, we're gone there and people who could not uh, swim was a problem. But Bombay beach in Juhu, you can walk long distance, probably half kilometer before you get somewhere here. That's good. And maybe other Goan beaches, maybe even better than those, I don't know. I haven't been there. And uh, so, as you walk through the water, you go deeper. Walk in the spirit. That's what the word of God says. And then you go deeper. Now, I want to talk to you about what is walking in the spirit. All of you will have questions. Many of you know how to do it. But many of you, still we don't know what is walking in the spirit. I'll take you through a few scriptures and a few thoughts and we will be there quickly. What is walking in the spirit? Let's go back to John chapter 4. John chapter 4 and this time we'll see verse 23 and 24. There are a few aspects. I'll give a few points to you. The first thing walking in the spirit is worshipping God in the spirit. Now, John chapter 4, Jesus speaks to this woman at the well and he tells in verse 23, But the hour is coming, now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. One of the steps of walking in the spirit that should begin in believers' life is the people in the world, they know how to worship their idols. They don't worship their idols in spirit. They don't do anything in the spirit. They do everything physically, just do because they have to do and they don't know why they did it, just they go and do and go back. And also sometimes even Christian churches as even as Chrissy was sharing, there are churches, they go to worship in the, and they try to do some things and then go off. And many Christians, many churches do the same thing even till today. But Jesus made it extremely and straightforwardly, made it clear, everyone who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what He meant was, what He meant, we're going to learn it from the Word of God this evening. But He also said, 
God is looking for such worship in spirit and in truth. Now question yourself, are you that person in this church who's worshiping God in spirit and in truth? In worshiping God in truth is very simple to me. I read the, what is the song is and I'm saying it from my heart. From deep inside my heart, I'm believing what I say is true. For example, I lift my hands, I should lift my hands. That is what his truth is. Or I'm dancing, then, then you say, I'm dancing and that is not truth. You are standing, you are not dancing. That is also truth. Got to understand the word of God rightly. If you say, I lift my hands, you lift your hands. I bow before you, bow yourself. Show whatever you say and you do it, that is what is truth. For some people, I do not know how they take these kind of words. But then for me, that's what it means. You got to actually believe whatever you're saying, you're singing and do those things heartfully from the depth of your heart. That is what is truth. And many people make mistake when you do from the depth of your heart which you're worshipping from your spirit. No, worshipping from the spirit is totally different. Worshipping in the spirit is just like walking in the spirit uh, means worshipping in the spirit of God. You are driven by the Holy Spirit to worship God according to the will of God. That's what is worshipping in the spirit. I just want to make it very, very clear this night. Worshipping God in spirit is you should be driven by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words the Holy Spirit put in your mouth and worship Him from the depth of your heart. Completely forgetting what you are doing and worshipping Him. That is what is worshipping God in spirit. And Paul made it very, very clear. If you go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. Let's go quickly because uh, the time is running and the message is going different. I do not know. I will end at this point. 14 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. For I, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. If I pray in a tongue, what he said? In a tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. Means what I pray, I do not understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Paul is telling, my understanding is unfruitful. What I'm praying in the spirit, I can't understand a word. So I'm absolutely, uh, I don't understand what I'm saying. It's out of my head. What I prayed, I don't know. Therefore, I'm not so happy because I want to, I want to know what I pray. Try to understand, try getting the right meaning. Verse 15. What is the conclusion then? So what should I do? I prayed in a tongue. I did not understand. I'm not satisfied. So what do I do? Then he says, I will pray with the spirit. Number one. And I will also pray with the understanding. I'll do both. Means I must worship or pray in the spirit. And I'm coming back, going back to praying also in the spirit a little bit later, but hold it here. And I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with understanding. He made it absolutely clear to you. Worshipping God in a song with words that you cannot understand. Is it clear to you? If you are singing those words which are on the screen... With all your deep understanding and singing, you are worshipping in truth indeed. But you are still not worshipping God in spirit. And God is seeking for those who worship Him in spirit and also in truth. Both are needed. So we have to sing the songs. You cannot say, let the songs be, I'll keep on singing in my spirit, I'll speak in, speak, keep in, in tongues, I'll keep singing in tongues. Some people do it in some churches. They don't want to sing what is there on the... Because maybe they don't know how to sing but that song. It's, it's okay. We don't know the song. So, both are equally important. You will worship God in spirit. Means that is worshipping in a language that you do not understand. Now let me make it very clear. In other words, every single believer must speak in tongues. Is that right? Every single believer must speak in tongues. And this is not the gift of tongues. 
When you receive Holy Spirit, you already receive something, a special gift, which where you speak in tongues automatically. This is different from gift of speaking in tongues, which is, or Paul refers to as a prophesying in tongues. Amen? Is that okay? So in other words, that is different, but singing and worshipping God in the spirit, in tongues, is for everybody. Everybody. Everybody in this church should be able to pray to God, worship God in the spirit, in an unknown tongue. If you don't do it, don't worry, God is going to give it to you. Don't worry about it. Don't get worried. But you got to believe the word. Today I want you to make it very clear to you. You got to have the gift of tongues so that you can worship God in spirit and also in truth. Amen. Are you with me this evening? If you have any doubts, you can ask me any time. After this meeting, you can send me a mail or whatever. I can explain you this. It's absolutely clear from this word. You got to speak to God in his language. The same chapter, 1 Corinthians 14. If you go in the beginning, what actually you are doing is when you're speaking in a tongue. Oh, mine it went back to some other place. But I'll read it for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. Okay, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, however, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Amen? You speak mysteries, in other words, the reason why God wants us to worship him in the spirit is, we do not know such marvelous words with which we can worship God because our knowledge is so limited. Our vocabulary to describe God's greatness is so minimal, so limited. So God wants us to worship Him in the way that He would love us to worship Him according to His will and His wish. I just want to skip quickly. One is worshiping God in the Spirit. Second thing is praying to God in the spirit. Let's go to that and we'll mix together. Let's understand. The second point is praying in the spirit. We know Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. It makes it very clear to us. I do not know why I'm going through this subject because I'm sure there are somebody who need it today in this church. Because to walk in the spirit, you got to do these things. This is what is walking in the water in the beginning. Go from the shallow into deep. You begin with worship and you begin with worship and you're going to prayer. Verse 26, Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And verse 27. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the spirit, what the mind of the spirit is, because he makes intercession for saints according to the will of God. Do you want to pray according to the will of God? Do you want to? There's only one way. Praying in the spirit, that is speaking, praying in unknown tongues. It's very important. If you do not have, don't worry. We'll pray for you. If not today, other times in this church, there are programs when you especially have those kind of days. If you are not able, do not get worried. God will give it to you. Only what you got to do is desire it. Amen? But this is included in walking in the spirit. When you first, One thing is worshiping God is one step. Praying to God in the spirit is another step. Hallelujah. You got to pray in the spirit. So you'll pray according to the will of God. There it's very clear. He is, you will pray in an unknown tongue. You cannot understand what you're saying. You don't know how to pray to God. For example, like uh, Tina has a problem. She has a problem. But actually God is, is not even showing me the problem. But it says pray for her. And I begin, wake up in the middle of the night and I begin to pray. In the spiritual language, what exactly she needs, my spirit begins to pray and God will send an answer for her. Amen. You will do those things. 
maybe you have a situation you don't know how to tell god a situation because your situation you are confused about your situation whether you want the job or you don't want the job whether you want to marry that person or you don't want to marry that person you want to build a house in such su- certain place or you want to buy a property whether to do it ask god i want this or i don't want this you don't know but you still you are confused you want to pray according to the will of god pray in the spirit Pray in the spirit. You will pray exactly what is good for you and you'll pray and once you pray, the answer comes. You will get answer. Actually, most of the times, you'll get answer while you're still on your knees. You'll understand in your spirit, this is what I prayed and this is what the answer. Amen? That is praying in the spirit. I'll just go quickly to the next point and pray in the spirit and uh, <clears throat> We learned about singing in the spirit already. Worship, worship in the spirit, singing in the spirit, pray in the spirit, number three. Number four, being in the spirit. Being in the spirit. One example I, I can give you is Acts chapter 10 verse 9. Don't go there, I'll tell the story. Peter was praying. And he was hungry. Peter was praying, he was hungry. And when he was hungry, he was praying. Probably he's praying, I need to get some food. Because people, his hosts were cooking food, probably was so hungry, he got delayed, he said he didn't know what to do. Went up, Lord, let me pray. And he was praying in the spirit. The reason is, when he prayed, he went into trance. He lost consciousness and began to see the heavens open. Hallelujah. This is an experience of being in the spirit. You can be in the spiritual realm and see visions you can see dreams, what God wants to show you. The only way is you got to be alone. Spend a specific time, special time with the Lord. When you do that with a desire to see something, God will open the windows of heaven and begin to show you things that he wants to show you. That is being in the spirit. The another example also we can tell is Paul writes, he went to the third heaven in the spirit or out of, whether in the body or out of the body. In other words, in the spirit. He went to third heaven. You'll find in 2 Corinthians that, uh, that information. And, and in book of Revelation chapter 2, book of Revelation chapter uh, uh, 2, uh, uh, I think, uh, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 1 verse 1. Uh, John says, I was in the spirit. What he says? I was in the spirit. Chapter 1 verse 10. Chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit. What he says? Uh, 10, can we have 10? Oh, yes. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. When you are in the spirit, you'll begin to hear what God wants to make you hear. Hallelujah. Are you with me this evening? So that is being in the spiritual realm, being in the spirit. And we have been exhorted to be in spiritual realm at all times. And also we have been exhorted to uh, pray in the spirit in a couple of other places. If you see uh, book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Paul says, praying always in the Holy Ghost. 